Hello Central, reporting to you live from the Bahamas. Just kidding, I wish I was in a place that looked like this. But anyway, tu bishvat and I hope you're enjoying your vacation wherever you might be. In honor of tu I would like to share with you a brief idea that I read by Rav Yaakov Meidan, who is a Rosh Yeshiva at Yeshivat Har Tzion in Israel. On Tu Bishvat, as the song goes, Hashkidia Poracha, Veshemesh Bazoracha, the Shkidia, the almond tree, begins to bloom. It's interesting because the almond tree starts to blossom in Shvat, whereas normally the rest of the trees don't really start growing until Nisan, a full two months later. What is this about? Why is the almond tree early? And why do we care? In order to answer this question, we have to look at the partio that we've been reading in the in Shul the past few Shabbos. Now, what happens? The first time that Moshe encounters Hashem, he is at the burning bush and he has this mate with him. He has his staff. And with it, he's able to perform miracles. Hashem shows him that this staff can turn into a snake. Wow, unbelievable. And later on, when Moshe goes to Paro and ends up performing these miracles of the Mako, he uses this matat, and Aaron also uses this matat in order to make these Mako come about. Later on, we see that what is this matat? What wood is it made out of? And we know that when Aaron and the other Nisim each had a matat, they each had some sort of branch. And who's is the one that's, that bloomed ultimately, it was Aaron's. And Aaron's mate, he, it blossomed with almonds. So we see that this mate that Moshe and Aaron both used were, was actually made out of this almond wood. Why does that matter? What's significant about that? What's the symbolism here? So the almond branch has three different stages that it goes through in order to bring about its fruit. The first is that in Shvat, it blossoms with the small white flowers. And these flowers, they're there for a few weeks, but then they actually fall off. The flowers fall off of the wood. And then in the weeks later, the small almond, the actual nut, the fruit begins to grow from these leaves, from the branches. And it's really fascinating to see how this actually parallels B'nai Israel's experience coming out of Mitzrayim and really throughout history to, until the ultimate redemption. How? How does this happen? We know that when Moshe goes to Mitzrayim and he makes all these makot happen and B'nai Israel ends up leaving Mitzrayim, it's something that happens so quickly. It's very rushed. Everything happens one, two, three. There's a real revolution of leaving Mitzrayim. It's not a long process. It's very quick, right? We say, B'nai Yisrael left Mitzrayim b'chip It happens so fast. And that's the first stage. And then, actually, the sad thing happens, which is that Moshe uses that same mate that he had been using, and he uses that at Meimariva. When Hashem says to Moshe, he tells him to speak to the rock, and instead, Moshe actually hits the rock with this mate. And that, perhaps, and that is actually what leads to Hashem saying to Moshe, you cannot enter the land of Israel, right? This was not correct. And perhaps what Moshe didn't understand was that the process of Bnei Israel going into the land was not going to be that same quick, immediate revolutionary process as the one that took them out of Mitzrayim. The one going into the land of Israel might have been, should have been more of a gradual evolution and a process more than this hasty exodus from Egypt. And ultimately, when we are talking about the ultimate Geula and our final redemption, we realize that this is something that needs to come about slowly. It's a very long process. We've been in Galut for many, many years. And today we see that we are in these stages of this ultimate redemption. And we have a state of Israel, which is amazing for us. And we also see that that does not come without its own difficulties. And there are, we still have really a ways to go. But we see how this parallels the shkedia, this almond that first has its 
its flowers, it then loses the flowers, but ultimately it has a produces this beautiful, tasty fruit that we enjoy. And on Tu Bishvat, this is an opportunity for us to think about the almond tree in particular and think about how that is a parallel that is parallel to our experiences as a nation. And I hope that as each one of us experiences this day that we can think about how we can contribute to the process of this ultimate redemption and that we should merit to see the Biat HaMashiach and the real Geula Bimhera Biyaminim.